Welcome to the Gigaspaces Zap event monitoring screencast. Events, in this case in distributed computing, aren't necessarily application events, those normal things that provide an application something to do, like orders coming in. These are environmental events, things that affect the systems upon which your applications are deployed. Environmental events are pretty important. When your application platform crashes, you want to know about it. A distributed system, of course, is designed to help mitigate the impact of some events. If you need a lot of RAM, well, the cloud distributes your heap across multiple machines. If a server instance crashes, well, a cloud is supposed to provide failover support. Well, that's all good, but it's not quite enough. If enough of these instances go down, or if you consume enough memory, you're still going to have problems. In fact, you really want to know when these events happen for multiple reasons. One is obvious, so you can react. If you have resources allocated, presumably you allocated them because you need them, unless you're over-provisioning, in which case you're not using Zap very efficiently. Be that as it may, you still want to have some overview of your system health. You're far better off with the system telling you rather than just hoping. Secondly, events help with triage. If you have a runaway process that is causing your system to lose resources, you need to know so you can fix your application. There's more to the story, of course. But first, let's see the event system in motion. We have here a, a data grid deployed with uh, two primary nodes and two backups, so four nodes. If we were to um, you know, shut down a node, let's flip over here and try that. Let's find one. Okay, it's, there's one deployed there. Let's terminate this node. And if we come over here, what we'll see is an event coming through the system of replication channel disconnected. In just a moment, we'll see another event coming through as the system self-heals and uh, reconnects the system. And this is normal functionality. Uh, this is part of the you know default failover capabilities built in within Zap. But, you know, the idea is here that you're being told what's going on. So you see here CPU utilization, um, you see, you know, that happened more than once. All these different events, you're having the system tell you some of the, some of the issues that are going on. But wait, there's more. You can also catch these events programmatically as well. Uh, if we flip over to our handy-dandy IDE, what we see here is a watch for alerts program which gets an administration instance then gets the alert manager and configures one. Um, then it adds an event listener so it actually looks for uh, any kind of alert that comes through uh, and dumps it to uh, the console. We can actually filter here. We can do a lot of different things here but this is just the, a simple example. Then we do a simple uh, a sleep because this is an asynchronous process so we don't need to uh, hang out and watch for the, for the events. So um, let's go back to our system over here, and we can see that we've got, um, you know, five different units. So we've got one, pro one that's unallocated. We have our healthy system here, which is intact. So let's go ahead and start our, our application and watch for an alert. Now our application is running now. Let's make sure. Yep. Okay. We come over here, and let's shut down... Um, GSC 9. So then, if we flip back over here, what you'll see is you have a programmatic response to the replication channel disappearing. Uh, this is telling us that something's gone down, that it's actually doing uh, a replication of the space to one of the empty nodes. And we'll see the, another uh, alert come through in just a moment saying the replication channel has been connected. In other words, it's been resolved. So, what does this do for us? Um, what we're seeing here is the function of a capable, persistent system. Uh, it's designed to be able to respond appropriately to internal and external stimuli. What the event system gives you is the stimuli, the stimulus itself, the, the, the thing that's happening. The administration API is the other half of the equation, which allows you to respond to any stimulus. In most cases, like you've seen in this, uh, in this example, the system will handle itself properly. But the ability to control the reactions means that you're not at the mercy of a standard configuration, but you have control when and if you should want it. For example, 
um, you know, here we've seen the system automatically uh, self-heal whenever a node goes down. But what you could do uh, is you could actually spin up new instances. You can say, you know, I want you to be able to I want you to be able to expand based on the amount of available RAM based on consumption or contract or you know you can actually adjust the system parameters based on these events as they come through. So what you have is the the function of a very powerful capable system that gives you the control rather than relying on a standard configuration that deployment or whatever you you can actually control all of these events at runtime as you need. Wait a second. We've been looking at standard system events of disconnection and reconnection. There are two obvious things we're missing. One is the ability to create events for notification. The other is the transport of those events. Let's talk transports first. SNMP stands for Simple Network Management Protocol, usually used to monitor network attached devices for events. It sounds familiar, especially in context, doesn't it? So naturally, Zap is able to log events to SNMP listeners as well. What I've been showing you is the internal event listeners built into Zap. Useful, but not necessarily, quote, network standard. So the ability to log events to SNMP is a handy feature. Obviously, since we can handle events programmatically, we can send SNMP events ourselves, but there's no need as it's built into Zap. Secondly, Zap's internal architecture means that you can send multiple types of events. For example, you can tap into the event handling subsystem with Log4j, which means you can send your event logs uh, asynchronously to listeners over SNMP. Here, we see Gigaspace's documentation on setting up a log to Log4j to SNMP trap, so you can then capture logging events and send them to any standard event listener. Um, we actually show OID view, or OID view, I'm not really sure how they call it, uh, quite honestly. Um, but we actually document and have an example of using this in our, in our uh, distribution tree, so it's fairly easy to see and you know actually leverage this capability. This is one of the strengths of Zap. Not only do you have the capability to do a, a ton of custom adaptation yourself, so you can use network standard tools if you like, but we've even done a lot of it for you, leveraging the Java community's strengths, such that all you have to do is decide how you want to accomplish something in this case, watching for SNMP events, and configure the system to do things in that way. And now back to your regularly scheduled programming. Um, thank you very much.